So hopefully uh, you know the uh, story, at least the broad outlines of Jeremy Hammond. Um, I guess several months ago I did, uh, I moderated a, uh, a fundraiser for um, for Hammond and um, uh, he has been in prison now for 18 months for the hack of Stratfor which was the private security consulting firm which revealed um, they were spying on Occupy, they were pitching to the U.S. government. It's unclear what the U.S. government did uh, with uh, pitches as to uh, spying on different journalists. Well, Friday, Jeremy Hammond, for this hack, was sentenced to 10 years in prison. And then following which, three years of supervisory release. Which means that he cannot use computers that are um, for work. He cannot use computers that are in any way or any device that are networked without having a... Um, some type of system to monitor it. Uh, it goes on and on, the restrictions that we placed on him those three years afterwards. Federal District uh, Court Judge Loretta Preska said that there was a need to promote respect for the rule of law. And that um, essentially that Hammond was being used as a... as a deterrent, as made an example of for public deterrence and to protect the public from future harms. She believed Hammond was an unrepentant recidivist because he had gone to prison for 24 months on a uh, prior instance of hacking. He was represented uh, by Margaret and Sarah Kunstler, They were uh, arguing that uh, what Hammond did was an act of civil disobedience. Apparently, after his last um, sentence of 24 months um, for hacking a group called Protest Warrior, this is an uh, organization that sold racist T-shirts and harassed anti-war groups, following um, uh, the Iraq invasion. He went to prison for two years. When he came out, he started doing um, social work, essentially, teaching students how to use computers, tutoring, working at soup kitchens, helping the homeless in Chicago. Um, at one point, he just became so frustrated and fell in uh, with this crew headed by Sabu, who apparently turns out to be an FBI, not just informant, but provocateur, I think it's fair to say. Um, he spo- he's been, spo- he, Sabu's supposed to have had his day in court for literally probably like over a year now. And every time his court date comes up, Reporters go there to to report from the the courtroom, and the case has been pushed back to another c- couple of months. Well, I I have a feeling that they don't want what will come out in his case to taint these other cases, because there's a lot of at least but four in terms of uh, these hacks. I think that involve Sabu. Because Sabu was the one who was orchestrating these hacks against these uh, websites. Hammond will serve 10 years in prison. He will put under supervisory release for three years. He will not be allowed to be on the Internet or use any electronic device without having them monitored. As according to Kevin Gastola, he will be prohibited from using any kind of encryption. 
you will be prohibited from using anonymity tools, specifically the Tor. So he can't use like an ATM machine. Encryption? Any any anything like that. It's encrypted it's an encrypted uh system. I don't know. He will uh, have to allow the applications to be installed that will keep track of all his activity. He will have to consent to warrantless searches and inspections. And for three years, he will not be allowed to affiliate with any hacking-related or civil d- uh, disobedience-related organizations, which is a stunning curtailment of someone's uh, free speech. That means no Amnesty International, No ACLU. I mean, the list goes on and on. It is um, League of Women Voters potentially. I mean, I I mean that that is so so broad. Who was it that um, engaged in that uh, the arrest, getting arrested out in front of the White House with three fifty dot org, the national? um, I can't remember what group it was. I. like it might have been even League of Conservation Voters, right. a totally mainstream, very very centrist so environmental organization. Uh, Jeremy Hammond, ten years in prison. Meanwhile, we have people who destroyed this economy, paid billions of dollars in fines, but not held liable at all. Apparently, the argument was that Jeremy Hammond caused significant economic financial damage to Stratfor. He's being forced, apparently, to pay $250,000, which apparently is just not enough. It is um, more of the uh, CFAA. This is also the thing that they were trying to prosecute... um, uh, Adam Swartz on. Aaron Swartz, rather. Sorry. So, just unbelievable. The amount of overreach. And one more point we should note. That federal district court judge Loretta Preska, her husband, apparently a client of Stratfor's, did not see this as in any way. And his name came up in the emails that yeah. were leaked and everything. Did not in any way see this as a conflict of interest that may be um, some way something that might taint this case. I hope somebody's bringing that up on appeal somewhere.